Because that's when everything happened with the gangs. Everything we see with the gangs right now ain't no... When they say first generation from now on, matter of fact, I'm going to call it a documentary, The Zero Generation. Let's start off from the base. No disrespect to gang members. Like, I have hella gang member loved ones, but this bullying stuff, mm -mm -mm, it's done with. And I think maybe I might be one of the perfect people because my street background, I don't... You sh Nobody should have fear for them, but I have... No, forget the Marine thing. I don't, I'm going to leave the Marine thing on the side. I have zero fear for you people. I actually know that if you're still doing this, you actually are hopeless. Anybody in the streets right now, you really are only there because you're hopeless. That's your last chance for hope. You, you, you wish and regret being in the gang. I know. I'm not, I know you never, you can't admit that. I'm saying it for you. And no disrespect to all y'all. Check out the ones who are successful, who gang members. They all left. You don't. Find successful gang leaders that are uh, still active in their thing. They can still represent. They can still rock a rag, a flag, but they're not active. They're not doing any. There's no drive-by. There's no walk-up. There's no pull-ups. There's none of that. There's no spinning on nothing. Shout out to y'all. that We getting it real. What state are you from? New York City over here. Where y'all from? That's for everybody, though. Where y'all from? Shout out to everybody in the chat and all that. Where y'all from, though? I'm from UK. So we got Pablo. From Boston, Massachusetts, big Boston NH. Oh, we gonna talk about Boston, Massachusetts today. When I can't, I'm I'm a little, I'm not gonna, I knew that I should have held this back. Cause when I seen virtual battle rap was fourth, I'm like, y'all don't know, y'all must not know what I'm about to talk about. I forgot, I'm gonna look at what I put. If y'all could go back in and vote, that conversation might be as big as this big L conversation to me personally. Maybe everybody don't know about virtual battle rap, but we're gonna get into some real history. Like I think it's time. I'm going to let people know why I love virtual battle rap. I'm, and it's because of I see direct connections of history. And then we're going to really connect what this shirt is about. And let me finish this up because I want to finish up this first conversation at least. Let me read what y'all saying though. Much respect social. Always social be pulling it down, man. Social holds it down. Social holds it down. Don't forget, next Saturday, next Sunday, y'all know I told y'all, this Sunday, later on, like maybe 5 or 6 o'clock-ish, I'm going to get on and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to open up the panel. Any Sunday, I don't have an interview lined up. And shout outs, I'm going to holler at somebody. I do have a plan, uh, somebody who's coming up, but I don't know how long he's going to stay up there today. So I'm not going to consider him an actual interview guest yet. Until that, that's, but next Sunday, pull up um, to Social Assassin, um, pull up to, my, I'm sorry, my channel, Social Assassin, Pablo Picasso. We got Unscripted Logic. We're going to have our first exclusive interview with me interviewing them, interviewing those homies right there. And don't forget tomorrow, in about 30 hours from now, about 30, 32 hours, Social Assassin and um, Pablo Picasso, they got their Unscripted Logic every Monday. Think about the name of that. Unscripted Logic. We talking about hip-hop. Unscripted, the freestyling, the logic, the consciousness is exactly what I'm talking about right now. That's how the real get. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I never really met. I don't call myself no gangster. The real gangsters, these are the ones who did all type of bloodshed, ties, scars with honor. The ones who were not, I'm not getting no stitches. I want my stuff bubbling. Those type of people with them, the real scar faces. When Raekwon did incarcerated scar faces, there was a whole crew of people with scars who, I'm telling y'all, that was like their, that was like um, the, the national anthem for people with scars. Incarcerated scar faces. And then also when you think about incarcerated scar faces, the ones who got the scars and they also in the kingpin era of the scar face, with like scar face, the king, nah, homie, that song was on multiple levels why. That's what I'm saying. Hip hop is like, think about what it cost. Y'all know when the beat drop, when the beat drop, that's yo, yo, hip hop is phenomenal. And that's what I'm saying. The virtual battle rap, we're going to get into that though. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, what games were you involved with? All right. Power ruling, um, I would say Damu and Kiwe. And those are the only two who called themselves gangs. Um, I was involved with crews and organizations before and after that. But I'm answering your question. You asked that, and that's not a bad question. With gangs, those are the gangs. But like I said, I'm gonna keep it real too. We that was like something that was played around with. Like when that whole thing came out, they said that anybody that's a group of uh, multiple people, two or three more, or we see that we're gonna consider that a gang. 
started formulating within these organizations and then when something happened with the leader those sets formed their own crews so a lot of the crew members i'm not gonna lie to you actually it's probably like 90 percent of all of the crews had somebody that they that was part of some damu or kiwi situation or part of some organization that was before damu or kiwi and i say that because that's how i really honored it because that was the consciousness Put the books in the chat if you understand Damu and Kiwe and let me know what language that is. And let's have a conversation about that. We're going to add it into the virtual battle rap um, conversation. Um, Yes, Stephen Knight. And I, and I let all the people know, all of my homies right now, and not one of them who was part of that and was part of any crew that I was with, none of them are active right now. Um, I have to think about that. Active. None of them are actively, get, not, none of them are actively gangbanging at all. I'm not going to say none of them might not be in the streets still, but they're not doing that in the streets if they're out there. But they all, I can say they're all working on some legitimate business or not popping with a legitimate business right now. I, wouldn't, I don't associate myself with other people who not. That's the fact. It's some loved ones who I can't deal with because you are cool with being a bully. I'm not cool with being a bully. I don't like bullies. I hate when, yo, it was sometimes I caught myself bullying and stopped it immediately. And I, every single time, I stopped and humbled myself is because I knew that I was being a bully. I knew what I had on me, what I had around me, what I could do on me. And I pushed the envelope one extra inch when I really didn't have to. One time I could have. Yeah. Yeah. So it could have like, I, let me just say that I I don't like bully so much that I don't like when I bully my nightmares. I told y'all when I went to Queens, the first time I went to Jamaica Queens and I was with somebody who older than me. And he went out. I didn't know he was going to. I didn't know. I didn't know nothing about a jux. Well, I knew about a jux, but I didn't know that that's what he was doing. So he went to this neighborhood out of the distance. I still actually every time I walk into neighborhoods that look like that in the upper class kind of places in Queens. And that's crazy. That's where. Oh, my God. That's disgusting. I live near one of those sections. I didn't even think about this. That just made my stomach just turn. But he was a bully. And I seen the guy. My friend has. He had a gun on him. It was only like a 22 or 25, but it was it was obviously it was still a gun. But the guy on the floor, like scrimmaging, like trying to get away, and I'm just there. I'm supposed to be lookout. I'm you know, he and then he tell this is what he does. He like, all right, just look out, just make sure you're looking around. We on the bus and he telling me this. So I'm like, right, look out for what? So I'm looking out on the bus. We get off the bus. I'm looking around for like females. Like we, that's what we was on. We was on a, we was going around different. We trying to get chicks from all different neighborhoods. So I'm looking around for girls. He's like, all right, here we go. He turned where he went. He, he made like a, he went and made, he just made a straight line, but like in a diagonal, like he like turned his body and just went straight. Like he knew he, he seen his target. He seen his mark. So I'm like running power walking and I get behind the cars and I just see the guy on the floor. He got the gun out. He ain't pointing at his head or nothing like that, but he got it out like, like, yo, you know what's going to happen. And the guy's like, take it, take it. And I'm just staring like, are you serious? And I'm like, I need to stop this. What can I do to stop this? And as I'm thinking about this, all right, we out, we out. And we ran, got right back on the bus, going the opposite way. It was right there. We didn't have to wait or nothing like that. It was like the perfect. And it's like, there's no way he could have planned it like that. We didn't have no GPSs or city mappers on our apps. The bus came and we on the bus. I'm just like, <sighs> For running, and he just trying to calm down and everything, and I'm just like disgusted with him. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm not. I stayed friends with him. I'm not gonna act like I wasn't friends with him anymore. But I just let him know. You ever do something like that, you need to let me know. And I was more mad because I was gonna. I mean, the bullying thing. I'm not gonna. Let me not play games with y'all. I wasn't. I was only like eight. I was eight, nine years old at that time. Ten at the most. There's no way that I'm going to tell y'all that bullying was like, oh, no, I was a bully to him. I wasn't thinking about that. I was mad that you didn't tell me that I was supposed, I'm supposed to be a lookout. You didn't even warn me what you're doing. Like, what you don't trust me? Like, what, why would you bring me out here and you want me to do this? And I don't know the story. Don't ever let that happen when that happened. And like I told you, I was walking around. I didn't know about that thing. But I, I walked around with my round. I used to walk around with a round. Not I don't I didn't want to ever have to have a gun on me or anything. I wanted people to know if this is going to go down that way. We're going to make it will be like that. But you need to know what I'm coming at. This ain't going to just be, you know, your crew and fight and my crew do something different. This is the reality. So I ended up having like by the time I was like 12 is when it really started happening. I had I started having nightmares and I used to see that guy up until probably like five, six years ago. I stopped having them nightmares. That's a result of bullying. I'm telling you that because he, me, myself, I'm about to read 